about this coffee is that if you buy five of them in a row, you get the sixth one for free. Even though you already paid for it. Taking a quick trip to uh, a town called Allingsås together with my dad. He needed something for his machine, so. Oh. Chill rip. <laughs> Chill rip. Dry belt. Dry belt in English. <laughs> I'm very glad that there were so many of you that liked my previous episode where I showed you how to vlog. I thought I'd show you a little bit on how to edit a vlog in this vlog, even though I think that editing is one of the most personal things and one of the hardest things to convey but let me just give you this example of me walking downstairs with all the trash and then throwing it into the trash bin here it is slightly edited And as you saw, it's a pretty boring watch. There's not that much going on. But if we do some quick cuts to it and make it fast paced and use the sounds in the actual clip as our guideline to where we can cut, then it's gonna look something like this. All of a sudden you have something that went from boring to interesting. To give you another example of how to make your edits interesting, I'm gonna show you an unboxing of these Nerf guns. And uh, yes, I bought even more because I wanna rig up the entire studio. One way that you can do it is to take the box and then you cut it open. And then during the meantime, as you're unboxing, you're ooh, doing some commenting on what it is that you're actually unboxing. But the reason that I don't do that is because I think it feels kind of boring and it loses the pace when you have that in a vlog. So what I usually do is some quick cuts to the unboxing and then again, I use the noise that the boxes make, the knife make and all that to know where I should cut. So instead of making the unboxing that you already saw, I would do something like this. <laughs> the downside about doing it this way is that your content gets a lot shorter. So instead of having an unboxing that is like one and a half minute, it goes down to just a couple of seconds. But it also makes it more interesting and more fun to watch as a viewer. Say hello to my little friend, eh? The reason that I'm doing this is because it can make any sort of dull activity look very interesting. Say for example that I'm gonna re get rid of this boxes that you see here. Instead of just like flattening them out and throwing them out there, I can use this as a vlog segment where I stomp the boxes, edit that into a quick sequence and then throw them outside. And then we just make sure to move the camera a little bit so we get a couple of different angles. And then move the camera again, get the last angle. This is very important when you're jumping into the edit. The more angles you have, the more fun you can make it. And I am referring to a previous episode. Link in the description. See, that was pretty quick, right? The good thing about doing it this way is that you can turn something normal into something interesting, as I just said. And the more you can think of the editing process when you're actually shooting the thing that you're shooting, the easier it's gonna get for you when you jump into the editing process and start cutting things together. Because then you already have a 
kind of vague line of where you want the video to go. But this is just my personal way of editing and my personal way of making a vlog. There's a bunch of different ways you can make a vlog. You can do a slow storytelling vlog where you just show what you're doing without saying any words. You can do super fast paced vlogs where everything is like dun, 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 TikTok style. And you can do my kind of vlogs if you want to do that. But the most important thing is that editing is your brain trying to show the world what you are thinking. And that is key because the more you do something, the more you will also find your style in the editing sphere. So practice, practice, practice. <laughs>